chapter one. As I sit down to write this, I can feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. It's been a long time since I've allowed myself to revisit the events that led me to where I am today. But for the sake of those who may come after me, I must tell my story, the story of how I survived the scary hours. It all started innocently enough. I was on tour, traveling from city to city, performing for thousands of fans every night. But something strange started to happen. It was around the time of the news that Tori had shot Megan, had come out. Every time we stopped in a new city, I would wake up in the middle of the night, drenched in sweat, feeling like I was being watched. At first, I brushed it off as just a side effect of my hectic schedule. But as the weeks went on, the feeling only grew stronger. Then came the dreams. Horrific nightmares that felt so real, I couldn't shake them off when I woke up. I saw my ops. They were coming for me in every direction. I was being chased by shadowy figures, their eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. They seemed to follow me everywhere, and no matter how fast I ran, I couldn't escape them. As the tour continued, things only got worse. My team started to notice that I wasn't myself anymore. Dreams of XSXX temptation kept me up at night. I was constantly on edge, jumping at the slightest noise, and then, one night it happened. I woke up to find one of those shadowy figures standing at the foot of my bed, its eyes boring into me. I tried to scream, but no sound would come out. I felt paralyzed, like I was trapped in my own body. It was then that I realized I wasn't dealing with something that could be explained away. This was something beyond human understanding. I called in a team of paranormal experts to help me, but even they were stumped. They told me that I was dealing with an ancient entity. Something that had been haunting me for a long time, I thought to myself, was this what Tupac felt like before death? I won't go into the details of how I eventually overcame this entity. Suffice it to say that it took a lot of courage and strength and the help of some very powerful friends. But the experience changed me forever. I now know that there are things out there that we can't explain, things that we can't fight with physical strength or material possessions, but I also know that we can survive them if we have the will to do so. So if you're reading this and you're experiencing something similar, don't give up hope. Reach out to those who can help you and don't be afraid to fight back. You can survive the scary hours I did and so can you. Chapter 2. I never thought that I would be telling a story like this. I never believed in ghosts or the supernatural until I came face to face with one. It was a woman from my past, someone who I had loved deeply, but who had passed away under mysterious circumstances. It started with a dream. I dreamt of her every night, and each time she appeared, she was more vivid, more real than the last. At first, it was comforting to see her again, to feel her presence beside me. But as the dreams continued, they became darker, more sinister. One night, I woke up to find her standing at the foot of my bed. I tried to speak, but my voice caught in my throat. She looked just like I remembered her, beautiful and vibrant, but her eyes were empty, devoid of emotion. She stared at me for what felt like an eternity before she vanished into thin air. After that, things only got worse. I started to see her everywhere, in the corner of my eye, in reflections and shadows. I could feel her watching me, following me, but whenever I turned around, she was gone. It wasn't until I heard her voice that I realized she was trying to kill me. I was in the studio working on a new track when I heard her whisper my name. I turned around, and there she was, standing in front of me. But this time, she wasn't just a vision. She was solid, real, and she had a knife in her hand. I tried to run, but she was too fast. She chased me through the studio, slashing at me with the knife. I could feel the blade cutting into my skin, the blood running down my arms. I thought I was going to die. But then, just as suddenly as she had appeared, she vanished. I was left alone in the dark, my heart pounding in my chest. I knew then that I had to do something. I couldn't live like this, constantly looking over my shoulder, waiting for her to strike again. I reached out to a friend who was well-versed in the supernatural, and he helped me perform a ritual to banish her from this world. It was a terrifying experience, but in the end, it worked. I haven't seen or heard from her since. I still don't know what caused her to turn into a ghost or why she wanted to kill me. But I do know that I never want to experience something like that again. It's a reminder that there are things in this world that we can't explain, things that we can't control, and sometimes those things can be deadly. Chapter 3. The pain was excruciating. It felt like every bone in my body was breaking, my muscles tearing apart, but I knew that I had to endure it. I had made a deal with the devil, and now I was paying the price. It started innocently enough. I was at a party, hanging out with some friends, when I met a woman who promised to help me become a better rapper. She was beautiful, with long dark hair and piercing green eyes. I should have known then that there was something off about her, but I was too desperate to improve my craft to care. 
She took me to a secluded spot in the woods where she performed a ritual that she claimed would make me a superstar. But as soon as it was over, I knew something was wrong. My body started to contort, my skin turning a sickly shade of green. My bones shifted and cracked, my teeth elongating into sharp fangs. I was becoming a monster. At first, I was terrified of what was happening to me. I wanted to run, to hide, to find some way to reverse the transformation. But as the days went on, I started to enjoy it. I relished the power that came with my new form, the ability to move faster and jump higher than any human ever could. But the more I gave in to my new nature, the more I realized that there was a price to pay. The pain of transformation never truly went away. Every time I changed, it felt like my body was being torn apart and put back together again. And with every transformation, a piece of my humanity slipped away. I was no longer the same person I had been before. I was something else, something dark and twisted. And I knew that I could never go back. In the end, I had to make a choice. Would I continue down this path, embracing my newfound power at the cost of my humanity? Or would I try to find a way to reverse the transformation, to reclaim the life, I had lost. I still don't know if I made the right decision, but one thing is for sure. The pain of transformation will haunt me for the rest of my days, a reminder of the suffering I endured to become something more. Chapter four, I was back on stage performing for thousands of fans, but something was off. The crowd wasn't cheering, they were jeering. And as I looked out into the audience, I realized why. My rap enemies were there, standing in the front row, staring at me with cold, dead eyes. I tried to keep performing to ignore them. But as I rapped, I could feel their presence growing stronger, suffocating me. And then all of a sudden, they were on stage with me, surrounding me, pushing me down to the ground. I tried to fight back, but they were too strong. They started to beat me, punching and kicking me with ferocity. And then just as suddenly as they had appeared, they were gone. I woke up drenched in sweat, but relieved that it was just a nightmare. Or so I thought. Chapter 2 the next night, I was back in my dream world. But this time, it was even more terrifying. My rap enemies were there again, but this time they were armed. They had guns and knives, and they were chasing me through the streets. I ran as fast as I could, trying to escape their wrath, but every time I turned a corner, they were there waiting for me. And then, just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, they caught me. They held me down, laughing as they took turns stabbing me with their knives. I screamed for help, but no one came. And then just as suddenly as they had appeared, they were gone. I woke up gasping for air, my heart racing. But as I looked down at my body, I saw that it was covered in cuts and bruises. I realized then that I wasn't dreaming. My rap enemies were coming for me, even in my waking hours. The final night was the worst. I dreamt that I was in a dark alleyway, surrounded by my rap enemies. They were closing in on me, taunting me, telling me that they were going to end me once and for all. I tried to fight back, but I was outnumbered. They beat me to the ground kicking me and stomping on me. And then, just when I thought it was over, they started to dismember me, tearing my limbs apart. I screamed in agony, but they didn't stop. They continued to mutilate me until I was nothing but a pile of flesh on the ground. I woke up covered in blood, my body aching, but as I looked around, I realized that I wasn't in my bed anymore. I was in the alleyway from my nightmare. And as I looked down at my body, I saw that it was still torn apart, just like in my dream. I knew then that it wasn't just a nightmare. My rap enemies had come for me, and they had succeeded in their mission. I was dead, just like in my worst nightmare. End of sample. Purchase full book at smsnovel.com.